He has the power to do anything. And I believe he will answer you today. Bless his holy name. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. We bless your holy name. Ancient of days, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration, Lord. May your name be forever glorified. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Father, we bless your holy name. The only one who can make fruitful will worship you. The one who are taking care of the cases of Sarah and Hannah and Elizabeth will worship you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. We come to you today, Lord God Almighty, trusting that this will be our month. Amen. Father, so let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. In your own miraculous way, visit us today. Amen. And even before the convention, my Father and my God, let there be shouts of joy in our homes. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to shake hands with two or three people by faith and say, you will rejoice with me very soon. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Matthew 6, verse 9. While you're opening your Bible, some people say, Why do we keep on praying? Because He asks us to pray till our joy be full. And we are going to keep praying. And one day, when those people have been saying, Where well, are we always praying? When they see us going forward with our twins and our triplets, they will know our God is great. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be 
thy name. Our Father, which art in heaven. When the Lord Jesus Christ was going to teach the disciples to pray, he said, this is how you pray. Say, our Father, which art in heaven. Now we all know that God is the King of Kings, is the Lord of Lords. According to Revelation 19, verse 16. Revelation 19, verse 16. But Jesus didn't say, when you pray, say, our King, which art in heaven. He didn't say, pray, our Lord, which art in heaven. He said, pray, our Father, which art in heaven. The Bible says our God is the God of gods. Psalm 136 verse 2. Psalm 136 verse 2. And Jesus did ask the disciples to pray and say, Our God who art in heaven. If they say so, they'll be right. They'll be right to say our king that is in heaven because he's the king of kings. They'll be right if they say our Lord which are in heaven because he's the Lord of lords. They will be right to say our God, which are in heaven. They will be right. Why did he say, say our Father? Because God is a family man. He is the father of fathers. He prefers the title Father to any other title. When he was talking to Isaac in Genesis 26 verse 24, Genesis 26 verse 24, he said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. I am the God of fathers. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 15, Exodus 3, 13 to 15, when Moses asked him, where I'm going, if they ask me who sent you, tell them it's the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of your fathers. He prefers the title, Father. Now, there can be no father except there be children. A man is a man if he has no children. We all can only call him man. We can only call a woman woman until she has children. We will simply say woman or lady or sister. But the moment a man has a child, he becomes a father. The one moment a woman has a child, she becomes a mother. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Genesis 1, 27, when God created man, the Bible said, male and female created he them. Why? so they can have children so that the man can become a father so the mother the woman can become a mother that's why those who say that men should marry men are wrong a man and a man cannot produce children just like a woman and a woman cannot produce a child cannot produce children you need male and female to produce children. And so in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, Genesis 1 28, he commanded them, be fruitful, be father, be mother, produce children, be fruitful, 
and multiply. Now, if, if you know anything about God at all, He will not ask you to be what He knows you cannot be. He will not ask you to do what you cannot do. He is not that kind of God. For example, in the same Matthew chapter 6, in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, from verse 11 to 12, Matthew 6, 11 to 12, he said, give us this day our daily bread. Because he knows without his assistance, you won't be able to get your daily bread. Oh, you said, no, 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 I know what to do. I just go to work. If he does not give you good health, you can't go to work. If he doesn't provide you with a job, there will be no job to do. If you have a job and there's something wrong with your brain, you won't be able to do the work. He needs to help you to get your daily bread. So he said, give us this day our daily bread. Because we can't do it on our own without God's help. But then he went on to say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Ah, uh, you need help to get your daily bread, but you don't need help to forgive those who offend you. You can do it easily. Somebody offends you, it is within your power to say you are forgiven. So when he's asking us to be fruitful, it is because he knows we can do it. It is within our power. But how is it going to be done? John chapter 15, if you read it from verse 1 to 5, John 15 verse 1 to 5, he said, I am divine. You are the branches. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will bring forth much fruit. It is the duty of the branches to produce fruit. But it is because the vine inside is supplying the branches with everything they need to produce fruit. Everything you need to produce children is already in you. And the Almighty God is going to activate it today in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, Ephesians 3 verse 20, he said our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think according to the power that works in us. There is a power inside that will lead God to produce more than we ask or think. That power is going to be released today in Jesus' name. Amen. The moment a girl is born as a child, everything she needs to become a mother is already born with her. That's why when she begins to grow, and there was the time for her to produce breasts, so that in future, children can suck milk from that breast. She doesn't go to the hospital for breast to be created. It is inside. At the correct time, it will begin to shoot forward. The moment a child is born as a boy, everything she needs to become a father is already inside. As he grows and that thing begins to develop, 
suddenly you hear the voice of the boy changing changing from the voice like that of a girl to the voice like that of a man there you know something has happened inside I'm telling you this today to encourage you everything that you need to be fruitful is already inside what we are going to do today is we are going to cry to God to release that power and let our fruitness fruitfulness begin when the almighty god said to sarah in nine months time you will have a son he wasn't bringing something new into sarah it was what was in sarah that was there and was dead that was brought back to life read that bible very well god didn't even lay hands on her he just spoke a word consider all the others Sarah Hannah Elizabeth God didn't say prophet should go and lay hands on them something happened when they heard the word of God and what was inside jumped back to life everything that is in you that will make you fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus, we jump back to life today. Yeah. All we want to do today is cry to Him and say, Father, that which you planted in me that is supposed to produce children, bring it back to life. And because God is a father and because he loves children God is an enemy of barrenness why because barrenness tries to defeat the purpose of God God said be fruitful multiply barrenness says no you won't be fruitful you won't multiply so barrenness is not just fighting you it's fighting God and if anything is fighting God we know who will win God will give you victory today in Jesus name so I don't want you to come to the altar this morning thinking that maybe God doesn't even want me to be fruitful no that's a lie of the devil he wants you to be fruitful don't come to the altar this morning thinking that maybe the enemies in my father's house in my mother's house are too strong that's why I'm barren no 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 there's no enemy stronger than God God will give you victory the only hindrance that can really stand between you and fruitfulness like I've said again and again is sin because I saw 59 verses 1 and 2 I saw 59 verses 1 and 2 say the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot save neither is he as heavy that he cannot hear he said it is only sin that can separate between you and God so we are going to deal with the issue of sin first if I have sinned if it is my sin that is standing between me and fruitfulness father forgive forgive and the Bible says his blood cleanses from all sins so those of you who are here who are not yet born again or you know you are still living in sin come to Jesus Christ now come and surrender your life to him come and ask
ask him for forgiveness come and ask him for the salvation of your soul come and ask that his blood will wash away your sin once your sins are gone barrenness becomes an enemy of god in your life and god will fight your battles for you so if you want to give your life to jesus christ i'm going to count from one to four before i say four make sure you are standing before me we'll pray for your salvation and then the rest of us will cry to god for our victory i'm counting now one yes god bless you if you want to give your life to jesus you want him to forgive your sins come come and surrender your life to him he has enough power in his blood to take care of all sins two Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please, those of you who have come forward, cry to the Almighty God. Say, I don't want sin to stand between me and you. Forgive my sins, save my soul. Have mercy on me, Lord. Let your blood wash away my sins so that you can answer my prayer today. Talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our brothers and sisters and pray for them. The Almighty God who saved our souls, who saved their own souls also. Let's talk to the Almighty God for a minute or two for them. And say, Father, have mercy. Have mercy on these, your children. Save their souls also. Let your blood wash away their sins. Give them a brand new beginning. Please, Lord, give them a brand new beginning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we want to bless your holy name. We want to thank you once again for your word. We want to thank you for the salvation of souls. We want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. They have come now. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Forgive their sins. Let your blood wash away all their sins. And write their names in the book of life. So that from now on, any time they call on you, you please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for those of you who have come forward. I want to assure you from now on, I'll be praying for you. So if you turn to your left, you see somebody with a placard, kindly follow him. And some pastors are waiting, they will collect your names, your address, and your prayer request. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. God bless you, you can begin to go now. Let's clap for them as they go. Let's clap for them as they go. If you are clapping, really clap for them.
Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, as we normally would do, you will come to the altar. I will pray with you. Then you are going to cry to the Almighty God this morning for him to fight this enemy called barrenness in your life and give you victory once and for all. And you will pray that prayer, not casually. And some of you, when I say go ahead and pray, I find that within five minutes, you are already going. I thought you came because you need God's help. And the program is supposed to be for at least for one hour. I'm stopping at about halfway so that you can have time to pray, to talk to God. That this month, this month, not next month, this month, you have your victory. And when you finish praying, you find the basket wherever they are placed and you drop your offering and then begin to go. So let's come to the altar now. Let's come. Let, let's, let's cry to God together. Let's cry to him together. He is our father, Abba Father. He's a family man. He could easily have said our God who art in heaven, but he said our father, our father. He's a father. And he has planted in you that which can make you a father and which can make you a mother. It's already inside. All he needs to do is quicken it and fight barrenness for you. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up because I want to pray. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name because I know you are Father. You are Abba Father. You are Abba Father. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. Abba Father, our Father who art in heaven, the one who made us male and female, the one who commanded that we be fruitful and multiply, the one who planted in us the ability to be fathers and mothers, we bless your holy name. Yeah. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are the Lord of hosts, and you've never lost a war. Barrenness is your enemy, and we know, Lord God Almighty. That your word says we are more than conquerors because you love us. Abba Father, today, in the lives of all these your children, the enemy called barrenness, defeat it in Jesus' name. Whatever may be responsible for the barrenness of your children, Father, destroy it today in Jesus' name. If the enemies come from the father's side, crush it in Jesus' name. If the enemies from the mother's side, crush it in Jesus' name. If the enemies in the husband's house, crush it in Jesus' name. If the enemies from the wife's house, crush it in Jesus' name. If the enemy is somebody who felt that your children had disappointed him or disappointed her, because your children are now new creatures, all things have passed away, all things have become new, every form of enemy crush in Jesus' name. The children are going to cry unto you now. Answer them by fire. Answer them today. 
oh my father and my god before the convention let your children begin to rejoice thank you almighty god because we have prayed in jesus mighty name now go ahead and talk to him on your own tell him lord of hosts fight my battles for me lord of hosts give me victory give me victory give me victory over this thing called barrenness give me victory give me the victory today open your mouth and cry unto him talk to the almighty god let him hear your voice don't rush away let him hear your voice talk to him let him hear you cry unto him show him you are serious cry unto him <laughs>